Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, Yash Khanna, welcome you to our 10th webinar of WellSet powered by NyQuil. Today, everyone would have doubt about dieting or exercising. And to clear all your doubts, today our today's session is to diet or not to. Starting with the session, I would like to call upon Mr. Sumit Gurga, who has been a part of NyQuil family for over a decade. He is into a business of photography and online sales on marketplace like Amazon and Tata Click. On behalf of Nike Group, I welcome you, sir. Thank you, Yash. It's been a pleasure to be uh, on this platform today. The association with Nike Wealth goes to more than a decade. And uh, I and my family have been having various investments with Nike Wealth. And uh, now being you all being transferred into this digital era, with the app and the top website that you have maintained, it's very easy to do all the transactions seamlessly. And my pro, uh, I being uh, managing a portfolio for my family of 20 members, the digital uh, platforms have helped me very much. So a single family uh, login has been given to me. I can manage everything from that uh, website. The investment opportunities that uh, Nikhil and uh, Chitra, my relationship manager, provide me time to time according to my needs is really going very well with me. And a goal of buying a house, which was uh, which materialized two years back, was all possible because of the investments we made with uh, Nike Wealth for the past decade. So heads off to your team. And I'm uh, wishing you all the best and keep doing uh, great. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sumit, sir, for those words. Now, I would like to call upon Mr. Nikhil Nayak to say a few words. Uh, hi, uh, uh, admin, if you can just uh, let me switch on my uh, video. Uh, Esteban, can you please give me access for the video? Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you, Sumit, uh, for those kind words. And thanks, uh, all of you, for being part of this 10th uh, webinar. Uh, we are really happy and uh, proud to have all of you uh, and have uh, we've been uh, able to reach out to thousands of people in last few weeks during the time of lockdown. Uh, we've always believed that uh, the investment in knowledge pays the best interest. And we've tried to learn with uh, all of you. And uh, Sumit, uh, especially the journey has been very exciting uh, for us also. I think uh, today's uh, webinar, I'm really looking forward to today's webinar. I remember one thing uh, in February 2006, uh, I got a call from uh, Mohan Bhai, Mr. Mohan Bhai Patel's office that uh, the chairman would like to come and meet you. And I go and meet him and uh, March 2006, we started engaging with them. Uh, since then, it's been a fabulous journey with the Patel family, uh, starting with Mohan Bhai Patel about humanity, about various intricacies of life, to Nayan Bhai about learning about uh, business, sharing ideas about business, and Karthik Bhai, and then uh, learn, uh, you know, having very meaningful conversations with uh, uh, Vishal Bhai, Bhavin Bhai, and the family. And uh, today we are looking forward to listen from uh, Kinita Ben whether to diet or not to diet. And uh, my choice would be not to diet, but I don't know what she has to say. Uh, and I believe uh, uh, today's session will be very useful for all of us. Uh, a role of a dietitian is that of an advisor. And uh, uh, I really look forward to this advisor in my day-to-day uh, -day life. Uh, over to you, uh, Yash. And I'm really looking forward to today's session. Thank you, all of you who made uh, these initiatives, who've kept this, these initiatives going by giving huge response uh, every weekend uh, by taking your precious time out. And I hope we make that time count by having some of the best speakers uh, in the country. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Yash. Thank you so much, Nikhil, sir. 
so before going forward i would like to inform every one of you that this as you all know this is our 10th webinar but our 9th webinar was by dr anjali chabadia it was about conquering covid with a positive mindset so we have the video recordings available on youtube anyone who are interested can just go through and even the quick summary of that webinar is available with the growth manager anyone who is interested please get in touch with your growth managers so coming now i would also like to inform you about our upcoming webinar which is going to be on our 10 ways to create 100 crore so moving ahead before starting i would just like to share an experience of my own self so pre lockdown i used to walk every day and even hit the gym regularly but post lockdown i have been looking through people's food story family whatsapp groups have been filled with snap of food being prepared so even i used to tell my mom ke even you go get groceries and we'll be making something fancy and posting the same thing on various social media platforms so few days back my mom was like look at yourself you have become so chubby tab mujhe three idiots ka dialogue yaad aaya pizza pe concentrate karu ya apne lockdown fat pe and then my brain was like pizza i'm sure many like me would be in this dilemma so i would like to share a beautiful quote that is motivation is what gets you started but commitment is what keeps you going since today we all are committed and motivated for today's session moving forward our today's speaker kinita patel does not need any introduction but i would like to express few words about her she is india's leading sport nutritionist based out of mumbai she specializes in sport specific diets along with weight management she has established a leading nutrition center named as meal pyramid she was awarded as the best nutritionist for the year by vogue an external expert consultant for gsk human performance lab and first indian global representative for professionals in nutrition for exercise and sports Most recently she has been nominated as jury member for second edition of Times She Untold Entrepreneur Awards 2020 which was held in this May For clearing all the doubts of our get to fit audience over to you ma'am Hello everyone uh, welcome I hope I'm audible to all of you loud and clear Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and an absolute honor and i'm really looking forward to doing this today with with this lovely lovely audience and uh, like mr uh, nikhil nayak said i would like to just repeat investment in knowledge is the best investment and i think today we all have removed this time to educate ourselves and i i became an educator from the day i finished my masters and i'm talking about almost 17 18 years back and i always believed in the power of sharing knowledge i personally feel that there is so much out there that you get to know with experience that if i don't educate my clients i am never going to get a winner out of them and uh, that that's something that's a motto that i strongly believe i never leave my client in a doubt as to why they are eating a certain food or why they are following a certain kind of diet because it's my responsibility to educate these people and the more we educate the more knowledge we gather by talking to a professional not by googling because google is the master and the doctor of nothing so if we actually discuss with a professional your doubts and get them cleared it stays more in your mind than actually just learning from text that is being written or somewhere on the google media so uh, i hope you'll enjoy this discussion my intention is not to tell you what diet to follow but fundamentally to explain you the basics of nutrition which is going to give you a little bit of understanding of why you eat a certain food and why is it important and that will help you shut doors on a lot of different kind of diets which otherwise i consider as unhealthy so before wasting a lot of time i just want to give a quick few seconds to you all to run a quick poll yes yash yeah. someone's running okay. a poll yeah i i'll be running it okay yeah. one second
Okay, so uh, most of our audience are already aware about the polls we run. So let's start off with the poll. Okay, so the first question to all of you: Do you agree being fit never depends on your age? Okay, uh, ma'am, I hope you can see uh, the way. Uh, can I also? Are... Can I also poll? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll have to. I'll for the next question. I can definitely give you an opportunity. Let's try that. Why don't you okay. take my answer as well? <laughs> okay, you can actually announce your answer right now once this poll is done. Sounds good. So we have already got eighty percent people who have voted. Currently, we have more than two hundred eleven people on the session. So uh, yes, uh, is the maximum vote. I will just publish it for everybody. You can see that almost ninety-six percent people have said yes for it. What was your answer, ma'am? Absolutely, <laughs> it doesn't depend on your age. That was that was an absolute no-brainer and not at all a right. rocket science answer to give. Uh, let's right. be very really honest about it. Uh, so you know, the uh, second. yes. Uh, sorry, should I move to the second one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. So over here, I'll allow you also to vote, ma'am. Sounds good. Everybody, all the panelists will be able to vote. Uh, has your fitness regime gone for a toss due to lockdown? Okay, here there are chances of fifty-fifty. Okay. So it's almost a tie. And I was predicting forty-five, fifty-five is the ratio currently. Did you vote, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll just end this poll. I'll just share the results with everybody. Yeah, as you can see, the yes is fifty-four wow. percent and forty-six percent. <laughs> That's very sad, yeah, audience. That's not good news. That's very bad. If you don't come, if I strongly believe, if you didn't come out fitter, thinner, smarter, or a well reader out of this lockdown, then you actually lost down on one of the best opportunities of your life. Like you could have read books, probably even finished a PhD to these three months. So I'm surprised that it, there, there is so much indiscipline, probably like exactly what Yash said, where he chose pizza over doing anything else with his diet. That uh, that this is this this is not good news. You you'll be ready for a good lecture from me in the next thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, we are looking forward to that. I'll just move to the next one. We have uh, two more questions left. Okay, so uh, is this lockdown taking a toll on your overall health? This is important. Okay, I'll just end the poll. I'll just show you the reason. Again over here, no is good. I mean, sixty-seven percent no, thirty-three percent yes. That's good, you know, because health is not just about what you eat. Health is about a lot of other things. How you feel mentally, how you feel physically. It's a very subjective uh, question to ask. Do you feel healthy? It doesn't have an objective answer. It can't tell you what weight you are and what's the quotient of your mental status. So uh, the fact that all of you still feel healthy. Basically, on basic grounds, that's good. That's great. Right. Okay. So, just last question before we start the session completely. Uh, so, the question is: Are you fearful of putting on weight during this lockdown? Yeah. This actually will give us a complete idea. So I'll just publish the result. Yeah. And can you see this? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, we have quite a little bit of a tie going on over here. <laughs> yeah. But you know, technically, even weight is a very, very broad word. It's a very uh, loosely used word. And when you talk of weight, uh, weight is not just your fat that you're carrying. So if you take an example of, say, for instance, a 80 kilo person. And you see the body type or a physique, say, for instance, of a John Abraham, who could be 80 kilos. And you see someone else who's not into fitness and is 80 kilos. There is a drastic difference because a John Abraham can also be 80 kilos. The difference is the muscle because muscle mass is what actually gives that weight. So when you lose, and that's one of the points I'm going to be discussing, that when you lose weight, you land up losing a lot of muscle when you do the wrong kind of diets. And that kind of muscle loss is not good for weight loss. So yes, weight again is a, is a concept that needs to be explained. Yes, it is necessary to lose overall weight after you've reached a certain point. Uh, but fundamentally, that should not be your only target. Your target should be muscle and fat and in its correct bifurcations. Great. Ma'am, we are done with the uh, calls. We can start off with your session. Sounds good. So um, let's begin. I already started uh, talking in the beginning through the polls itself. But uh, so let's understand, let's educate ourselves on the basic concepts of nutrition. And the basic concept of nutrition are three main important macronutrients. And that is your carbohydrate, proteins and fats. Now, uh, for the longest time, fat had a very villainous name. Uh, considered to be a taboo to consume fat. Books and books were written, articles were published of how bad fat is in a person's diet. But a lot of research has changed. And that's the best part about my field. I love nutrition because our research is constantly evolving. We are not sitting back and saying that, you know, follow the same rules of eating. Yolk is not good in the diet. You must not eat non-veg. You must eat only vegetarian. So these concepts, research based, keep changing. And uh, eliminating fat in the diet is one of the one of the major breakthroughs that happened. Um, so when we talk of carbohydrate, protein and fat, let's start with carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is of two types. Okay, so again, carbohydrate can be very, very complex in its structure and very, very simple in its structure. Now, when we talk of dieting, when people say, okay, you know, I'm going to go on a diet. That does not mean you eliminate carbohydrate, loosely used as carbs. I'm removing carbs from my diet. I'm not eating carbs in my diet. Okay, that's very loosely used term that happens. But carbohydrate, the fact they are of two types, they both have a complete different biochemical role to play in your body. And that's what gives you the result. The key to success on a diet is how much of carbohydrate, which type, of carbohydrate and what time of the day do you consume that carbohydrate now if i had to give you a simple example what are these carbohydrates so when you say complex it is anything that is high on fiber anything that is whole grain so you know we get quinoa pastas we get multigrain millets uh, we get millets which are like rajgira jawar bajra nachni considered to be better than wheat you may even have brown rice over rice because it has more fiber, because it is more complex in its structure, that thus making it a better carb. Whereas your simple carbs are carbs that are fundamentally uh, simpler to digest, to consume, gives you quicker energy, say like sugar, quick energy, fast digesting, jaggery, honey. These are simple carbohydrates. Now they both are very different and the reason why I'm able to judge which kind of a client needs what kind of carbohydrate is because of my background of sports nutrition. I strongly believe that as a sports nutritionist, I cannot tell an athlete to not consume honey at all or not have sugar at all. So there has to be a balance. So when I look at the quantity, quality and the timing of these carbohydrates, say I'll give you an example. You were walking on the street and this is one, one of my most favorite examples. You were walking on the street and very hot middle of the day and you fainted. Okay. When you faint, there are a lot of different foods that can be put in front of you to give you instant energy. I can come with the anda. 
I'll give you one whole boiled egg. Is that going to get you out of it? No. I can come with a chapati. It's a carbohydrate, right? Is it going to give me, give me quick energy? No. Or I can come with a glass of water with sugar in it. And that in a matter of seconds is going to give me quick energy. So that is the biochemistry of the rate at which carbs get absorbed in the body. Now the problem here is when we are targeting weight loss or we are looking at fat loss, we are trying to avoid these simple carbohydrates because when you don't need it, they immediately get converted to fat. That's where the problem is. So it's not actually the fat that you're consuming that's getting converted to fat. It's the refined foods that are immediately getting converted to fat. So diets usually tell you to cut carbs, but they don't always explain the type of carb. And that's the biggest trick. And that is why you need to sit across the table, sit with your nutritionist, discuss it out with her, and you can actually eat brown rice or rice every single day in your diet and still lose weight. So here is my first point on whether to diet or not to diet. You never need to die dieting. You need to just diet the right way. If you get your quantities, your timing and the type, the quality of the ingredient in place. Now moving on to my next important macronutrient is protein. Now protein is something that has had a very a complex mixed reaction from people. Now everybody knows protein is important. We all need protein in our diet, but there is there is this uh, fundamental in people's mind that you know when you get onto a diet, you need to be on protein supplements, and that's absolutely incorrect. Okay, now again, this is my experience that comes as a sports nutritionist. First of all, understand few things about protein which are considered to be myths. Excess protein is going to give you kidney failure, whether dietary or supplemented. Okay, it's not. If you have a healthy functioning kidney, which has completely not been compromised with any issues, consuming enough protein in the diet, your kidney is absolutely capable of handling it. It's not going to go into any kind of kidney damage or bladder damage. Okay, but the bottom line here is whether you have a compromised kidney or not. Okay, so you don't be the judge of that. Let's sit across the table again with a nutritionist and understand whether you need a certain quantity of protein or not. Now, a lot of people just feel adding protein to their diet is going to get them very met metabolically active, which basically means it's going to help them lose fat, which is true. But the myth here is they cut out carbs from the diet. They come down to very low fat in the diet. And one of these diets is called high protein diet where you just consume 90% of the day's calorie coming from protein. Now, the trick here is the body needs what it needs. If you're not going to give energy from carbohydrate, it is going to get it from the protein. And then your excess protein is also going to get converted to fat. So you are not going to achieve the results that you want. Protein is metabolically very important because your muscles are all made of protein. Okay, your muscle understands only one language and that is protein. For instance, your brain understands one language and that is glucose. It only understands glucose for energy. Okay, however, in clinical conditions where you could be compromised to have enough carbohydrate, which could be like a diabetes, your brain can adapt to function from fats as a source of energy as well. And this is the basics of all diets that are made okay whether i'm just going to name a few i'm sure most of y'all must have heard these high protein low carbohydrate whether you are looking at high fat ketogenic diets whether you are looking at uh, say certain kind of intermittent fasting uh, whether you are looking at say consuming uh, raw food vegan food going off dairy you know, these kind of diets. And uh, these diets are very, very confusing. And the reason why they are so confusing is because every diet is telling you to eliminate a certain food group. 
right it is telling you okay if you are on a vegan diet you don't need to consume any any kind of non vegetarian food if you are on a gluten free diet you cannot consume anything that is coming from a wheat source if you are following an intermittent fasting there is a window to eat if you are on a ketogenic diet you are completely eliminating carbohydrate and consuming large quantities of fat and protein now the biggest issue that we are facing over here is coming down to the basic nutrients of carbohydrate protein and fat the moment you eliminate a food group that diet becomes insufficient that diet becomes not the right kind of diet because eliminating a food group is giving you deficiencies that means you are telling your body that you cannot consume this food because this food is not good for you right so this is where we are um so when i talk of basics of nutrition carbohydrate protein fat while become one of the most important nutrients in our body what is also important is hydration and that is my fourth important point lot of people feel, feel that when you are dieting going on you know consuming 3 days of liquid diet 3 days of vegetable juices 3 days of just fruit juices just having liquid hot water nimbu pani not doing anything else in the diet these are not substantial diets these are not the kind of sustainable protocols that you should be following in your eating pattern and when i talk of whether to diet or not to diet that's not the way to diet the way to diet is get your quantities of carbohydrate of protein of fat in the day as much as you can spread it in the right quality and timing and that's where you are going to get a perfect diet but when you talk of perfect diets here is the problem everybody is an individual and everybody needs a different kind of a diet right so when we talk of difference in individual how much should one consume and how much should one not consume depends on a lot of factors age height weight individual choices dietary preferences allergies clinical issues if there are any and all these are very very important factors when you're making a diet so if you are someone who likes to google your diets and likes to follow the latest trends be rest assured they are not taking any of these criteria in your place they are not going to give you any kind of breakdown of what your body actually needs and i'll give you a simple example just moving forward from the previous one that i gave you could be uh, 30 years old weighing 80 kilos and that 80 kilos can be muscle or can be just pure fat with high circumference or surface area and that cannot be counted as a part of your diet so how are they going to judge that what kind of an 80 kilo person you are so this is where it gets important to understand and uh, many times even certain kind of diets tell you to do a lot of portion control lot of grammage lot of you know calculations of everything now this kind of macro calculating of diets is important it is very very important when you are talking of an athlete when you are talking of... uh, we can't hear you you have gone on mute you're still on mute can you hear me now yes yes yeah. so when you're talking of an athlete it is very very critical to get your macronutrients correct it is important because uh, how much gram for recovery how much gram is required of carb protein fat of hydration it gets important but when you're looking at weight loss when you're looking at working on overall health overall body overall nutrition gramming the food like this is really not ideal for the mental situation of an individual he might just feel extremely bogged down and very very it's very uncomfortable to constantly keep quantifying if i'm working with a ceo of a certain company and i'm going to tell him keep gramming 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 you have to weigh the food that you eat every time before it goes in your mouth 
it's very difficult to do that we cannot do that so i have to make much more sustainable diet plans i have to give a plan which is going to take into consideration their routine their timing at 4 o'clock typically in the evening he might be in a meeting and i tell him okay you know what i think you need to eat kakdi gajar or a vegetable juice that's not going to be sustainable so sustainability of these kind of diets only comes if you are going to keep it as close to your skin the more you are going to go random the more you are going to land up cheating or breaking the diet and all the goals are just going to go off so whenever you follow any kind of a diet routine remember you are keeping it close to your skin don't try to go cold turkey on certain foods and say okay you know from tomorrow i'm off i'm not going to eat this i'm not going to touch that trust me in a matter of 3 months it's all going to go off so that is not called dieting because you are not making lifestyle choices you are not making choices that are going to help you sustain over a longer period of time so here we are on what kind of important sustainability points that are there on diet and well there is always two sides to a coin and a successful sustainable diet can only happen if there is some kind of activity now i have had very very lazy clients who would tell me that you know what i can't exercise i'm just i'm just not going to eat you give me a low calorie diet okay now this low calorie is also a concept people want to follow low calorie diets there is nothing like a low calorie diet every food has a calorie and the moment you are going to try and deficit yourself from calories you are going to not get the right amount of nutrients that you need and that's what happens when you know you see yourself dull and you see yourself fatigued and low on energy that's exactly what happens when you go low on calories so going low on calorie or figuring the right amount of calorie all depends on an individuals there are a lot of parameters we have to take into consideration before we decide what and how much of calorie you need to consume so that's very important so don't go on those kind of unsustainable low calorie kind of diets what's obviously important to know is when you are following is it necessary to count the calories is it important to count the calorie that how much calorie you are eating in the day so here is the quick tip to you all calories is made from carbohydrate protein and fat calorie is just a cumulative number of carbohydrate protein and fat so where the calorie is coming from is a bigger question than actually asking how much calorie you are eating i hope you all all are understanding what i'm trying to tell you because this is very very critical point over here everything has calorie nothing is zero calorie there is no food and if it is then it is made it's made under a machine and it is absolutely synthetic if it is zero calorie with all the synthetic sweeteners added to it so a calorie is a cumulative number that comes from carbohydrate protein and fat and a good sustainable diet will have the right percentage of carbohydrate protein and fat to give the calorie and this calorie in that is energy intake calorie intake the calorie in is correlated to the calorie out so this is a very important concept if you know how much you are consuming it is easier to figure out how much you need to burn but if you go on low calorie diet and say i don't want to exercise at all over a period of time the low calorie diet is going to make you lose a lot of muscle you are going to start looking weak you are going to lose the muscle mass that has the ability to burn fat and hence it is not going to be sustainable because eventually that kind of weight is just going to keep bouncing back so if you want to be on a sustainable plan take a break i'm not saying don't take a break live a little you don't have to exercise 365 days of your life and you don't need to be on a diet 365 days of your life what's important is to know that yes i need to keep a balance between the two the moment you lose this balance if you say okay you know for 3 4 months you were under a guidance and you were on a workout plan and you were following a diet and you showed phenomenal results and after 5 6 months after that you said okay you know what i just can't exercise and you drop that part out of your balance sheet 
you are going to gain weight as much as you will follow the diet you will gain weight and the same applies to the diet you if you feel that by working out you can get away with eating anything no that's not how it works but yes take planned break take planned holidays take planned cheat days and it's very critical to cheat it's very important for the sanity of sustainability to cheat a little so live a little cheat a little and um, i think uh, i hope i have covered enough of everything that you need to know about these different diets i don't want to go into diets as such as to what a keto does and what a high carb low fat does what a paleo does what a vegan does that i am going to leave to you all now to figure because the basics of nutrition is what i wanted to explain to you all so um i hope this is enough good information for you all <clears throat> yes do you want to take some questions uh, yeah, hi hi good it. evening hi hi kirtida uh yeah very well said uh, yeah and further uh, definitely depends on the questions that have been asked uh, yes yeah. so we have received more than 100 questions uh, that's excellent yeah That's so uh, i'm sure uh, we'll be able to catch up with all the questions maximum let's questions possible let's do that let's take as many as we can that just makes yeah. it interactive yeah. shoot so our first question is from uh, mr ashok monani of uh, ekta group uh, he has asked uh, how important is an emotional diet in comparison to a physical diet uh you know if i'm getting this right basically whether emotional health plays a role on your uh on your on, on the way on actually following a diet am i right kitida is that what he's trying to ask yes okay yes, that's so what we feel mental health is the most critical to have any kind of success on a diet yes exercise is important yes following diets uh, is important the right kind of diet and i work very very closely with a lot of lot of psychologists and uh, we have come down to a conclusion many times you know when when you are anxious depressed not in the right frame of mind uh, when you are pushing yourself to do something that you don't enjoy that mental health is not meant for following strict diets okay when we talk of nutrients like carbohydrate protein and fat withdrawing any one is going to affect the mental sanity of an individual and if they are not in the right mental health they are going to find it very very difficult i'll give you an example very commonly when women especially women uh, because this is more hormonally challenging and when you withdraw carbohydrate from their diet and when you tell them you cannot eat desserts you can't eat chocolate there is a sudden mental resistance to following that diet and the reason is because you immediately feel an emotional low you feel depressed and then if i tell that person that you know what you will have to work out for 60 minutes every day and you're not going to get any carbs doesn't work take that one piece of chocolate and put it in your mouth and just see the happiness in your mind just put that one chapati in your diet and suddenly you will feel that oh you know i'm actually not following a diet and i don't feel like i'm on a diet so keeping your favorite foods and hence i'm repeating myself cheat a little live a little it has to be planned cheating does not mean every evening eating eating samosa that's not the kind of cheating i'm talking about but a planned cheat you must you must because it is important for mental health it's very very critical true uh next question is from uh, vanita bharani uh, she has two questions uh can you suggest a uh, immunity related diet okay. and second question is uh, whether ghee can be eaten if on diet okay so immunity is there can't be a immunity diet there are ingredients that give you immunity and immunity is fundamentally comes from basically eating food okay if you are not going to eat food and if you are going to withdraw a nutrient first of all your immunity is going to drop a okay because the moment you will say i'll remove carbs from the diet please understand removing carbs means removing vegetables fruits grain everything that we tell you to eat to boost immunity and to get vitamin c and to get vitamin a okay so immunity comes from ingredients which are basically coming from foods okay so your make sure you are not on a calorie deficit diet first of all that's the key to immunity 
second of all always remember to have foods that are colorful the more the color the more is the immunity okay so when you take a green uh, say palak then you take a translucent dudi then you take uh, a red bell pepper red capsicum take tomato uh, take a carrot which is orange take all these colors the more platter of colors you will have the more you are going to get phytonutrients that is all immunity boosting small small ingredients such as just vitamin c which you can get from a nimbu you can get from an amla you can get from ginger even these fancy herbs such as oregano and thyme all these also very very high on, on immunity and especially for your lungs it's very good for oxygen breathing as well so um, then certain superfoods like we call chia seeds which are superfoods mm -hmm. that's takmaria then we are looking at taking shots of say cinnamon of apple cider vinegar of a uh, combination of honey with cinnamon mm. all these are immunity boosting all these are going to help you with your immunity so make sure you add all these things uh, in your diet as much as you can don't need to overdo if you have four lemon shots in the day the immunity is not going to peak that's not how it works it's they are very concentrated micro doses so it's little bit of ginger little bit of nimbu little bit of thyme they are enough to give you the kind of immunity that you and what about uh, ghee can ghee. be eaten yeah of course ghee can be eaten the source of ghee is very important make sure either you make it at home or get from a source which is not uh, hydrogenated okay the ghee that you get which are kept on the shelf are usually uh, they become um, uh, they, because they are hydrogenated they have certain kind of fats that are added which makes it high on trans fat so if you can ghee, make ghee at home i would definitely let you consume ghee in your diet or a organic source of ghee works absolutely fine okay uh so now this question is a very common question so i'll just uh, uh, not name anybody uh does dieting make your immunity poor yes that's what i said don't go on calorie deficit diets don't go on diets where you are withdrawing a certain kind of nutrient because the moment you do that yes you are going to get a deficiency in nutrients and it is going to affect your immunity so any kind do not diet with calorie deficiency when you diet diet with sustainability where you are having each and every nutrient as a part of your diet uh next question is from uh, devki nandan agrawal uh what is the alternate of walking in this lockdown period for senior citizen uh, uh so devki ji there are a lot of uh, different ways in which you can keep yourself active and one is just counting the steps uh walk around in your room make sure that you're getting a little bit of movement over and above that uh senior citizens but these days senior citizens are very very smart my 92 year old mohan bhai patel my dada ji uses uh, uses his iphone and youtube and zoom so uh, there are a lot of uh, videos on um, youtube that basically make you walk on the spot okay so it's called leslie walk is one of the most common ones that i tell a lot of my clients to follow and you can just be in one place and you can just uh, literally get your step count it can help you stay active and it's not even like a hardcore workout it's not like where you're going to feel that you're exercising it's the same thing that you would probably do it in the garden or on the road you're just going to do it standing in one place okay um again many people have asked this question uh, does diet affect your mental health yes diet does affect the mental health in many many ways because like i'm repeating myself certain foods are just important to maintain sanity and that is why you should keep them in little planned quantity in the diet and one of the practices that i have with a lot of my clients um especially my younger kids who come to me i tell them to make a list of foods that they like to eat and they don't like to eat and usually the list of foods that they like to eat which they know is unhealthy but they still like to eat so they will make like a list of 70 things that they like to eat which are all unhealthy and six things that they don't like that they uh, don't like to eat and um, what i usually do is i plan the diet in a way that at least two to three times a week i give them something of that unhealthy list that they like to eat 
and that just adds compliance that just makes them feel that you know okay at least i'm it's worth it to listen to her as far as she is giving me something that i like so it's like a good give and take that happens between the client and me so uh, and i always believe that adds compliance and it is important for your mental health so don't go on to diets where you decide to quit everything because that's not the way to diet that's the wrong way to diet that is the kind of diet you will probably do for uh, you know 3 weeks before you're getting married or you will start it on 25th december because you want to get into a dress on new year's eve so those kind of diets are not the kind of diets that i crash going. diets <laughs> where you actually get crashed <laughs> <laughs> um next question is from uh, pradeep dharia uh, what is your opinion about intermittent fasting so pradeep ji intermittent fasting is uh, a concept that was originally uh, formulated for people who had clinical issues so those who had digestive issues where they could be because of cancer they had to remove a part of their intestine or they had to staple their stomach for a reason or they had a lot of hyperacidity uh, and gastric issues so those were the kind of clinical cases for which intermittent fasting was formulated um, so fundamentally intermittent fasting is a great concept because it adds a lot of discipline in an individual's life but unfortunately people even use intermittent fasting as just thinking that okay ye 8 ghanta kha sakte hai na kuch bhi khayenge so that's not the way intermittent fasting is done as well so my view is it's a good concept for people who are extremely indisciplined to give them some kind of discipline it works well and it can even be sustainable but it needs to be done in the right way intermittent fasting does not mean 8 ghante mein kuch bhi khao ya you know eat whatever you like just because the other hours you are fasting or you are dieting as such that's not how it works so i'm quite pro intermittent fasting only and only if it is done the right way okay uh so uh, this is a common question uh, some diets make you lose 3 uh, to 4 kgs in a week so how is it possible so that's what i was explaining initially as well right that uh, weight is very very uh, complex it is not just correlated to fat weight comes from organs comes from muscles comes from the layers on the organs which is made of fat comes from water and the moment you lose weight and when you go on these crash diets kirtida like you were saying those kind of crash diets initially don't give you fat loss what they do is they just leach the water out of your body so you land up losing a lot of water and then it starts breaking fat sorry it starts breaking muscle fat actually is the last thing that gets broken so when you lose that 3 4 kilos you are actually losing huge amount of water a little bit of your metabolic fat um, muscle tissue and very very less amount of fat so your weight loss is actually mm-hmm. a waste of time because you know you would just not achieve anything you have lost all the good muscle and lost very little fat okay uh next question is from neha mehta yeah. uh what should a vegetarian eat to fight iron and b12 deficiency in body so you know uh, vegetarian mm-hmm. foods are definitely high on iron it's not uh, that they are not it's the source of the iron the form of the iron so iron is also in two forms and unfortunately in the vegetarian sources the way in which iron is present that is a non heme iron it does not break very efficiently and that is why vegetarian foods are not uh, efficient sources of iron they are high on iron but they are not efficient sources of iron so if you are someone who is extremely anemic and you have an underlying clinical anemia issue being on supplements would be a good idea don't try to increase your iron with the diet but foods that are high on iron are all your green leafy vegetables uh, dates honey Uh, all these are high on iron and complementary it's important to remember that iron must be consumed with vitamin c so that's the way iron gets absorbed best uh, however b12 
is not present in vegetarian foods at all in fact even in your non vegetarian food like an egg white does not have any b12 it is only in the yolk like your b12 is high only in meat that also red meat not lean meat so um, b12 is uh, an unfortunate supplementation that is required for practically any population because even those who are meat eaters may not be eating the quantum of meat that is required to keep b12 at peak okay. uh next question from uh, sandeep para i am a marathon runner last 3 months there is no practice want to start again long run practice please advise so uh, yes this is the story of all my athletes and i think all my athletes have just come out so much more conditioned because you know athletes usually don't get this kind of time to do conditioning workout so they have worked out on their uh, the weight bearing bones and uh, the weight bearing joints and i hope that you used these 2 3 months to work on those things and the now, now the fact that now you want to get back uh, the diet strongly depends upon the volume at which you are going to begin so uh, be rest assured all your uh, colleagues uh, and your other runner friends uh, might uh, some of them might come out very very stronger and some of them might find themselves extremely weak because volume running mustn't have happened and uh, to begin with i would definitely you know i would sit with uh, your trainer and guide the trainer and the trainer can tell me based on your fitness level how much you are going to start and what kind of program he is going to put you on but two things you'll have to remember the most one is when you are running you are going to require a lot of recovery so make sure that your recovery meal that is your post running meal which needs to be a com combination of carbohydrate and a combination of uh, protein and a uh, second important thing is the weather the weather now changes so runners are going to be running when it is drizzling in the morning or it's going to be raining in the morning so make sure you are maintaining that peak immunity status in your body uh, otherwise you are going to be someone who's going to land up catching a cold which you don't want in these challenging times and it might again affect your entire running program so um, be sure of that uh, remember to just uh, recover correctly and uh, get your protein and carbs and get make sure that you are keeping immunity at peak that would be my suggestion um yeah so rohan uh, uh, bartake uh, i hope i have uh, spelled his surname properly uh, his question is name some basic easily available food to increase immunity like i said immunity comes from nimbu ginger thyme oregano all colors mango uh, oranges apple uh, amla honey chavan prash all these are your basic immunity increasing food but that does not mean you eat heaps and heaps of it little little of all this is more than enough uh from uh, next question from archna beladi should we keep updating or changing our diet plans interesting question very very interesting question so if you look at let's compare that to a fitness program okay if you did 10 squats on day 1 and day 2 and day 3 and by the time it is day 40 you are going to progress 10 squats is going to make you feel very very easy and that is why the ratio of carb protein fat also in a person's diet has to keep progressing and the progression only comes when you have got the basics right so yes a person's diet needs to keep changing it needs to keep updating uh, with age with workout with changes in progression with your own body demands uh, it's important that at every stage it has to complement a person's diet is different during childhood during their uh, puberty uh, during their uh, menstru once the menstruation starts hitting peak uh, for growth for height uh, for pregnancy for lactation for 40 plus diet is different suddenly because you know you go into perimenopause for menopause for men also it changes because peak muscle mass for men also dips by almost 70% after the age of 50 and almost 80% after the age of 70 so it's very important that we make enough muscle which keeps us metabolically active and uh, hence the diet has to keep complementing your ability to burn calorie if what you were eating at the age of 25 cannot be the same 
same diet that you, you'll be eating at the age of 50. You'll just not be able to metabolize it correct. So at every stage, the diet has to keep changing. Uh, we are running short of time, so I'll just stay, quickly take the last question. All right. Uh, the question is uh, asked by Mr. Amit Patel. Okay. Uh, how to be more energetic throughout the day? We are more involved in office work, so how to avoid back pain? Back pain? Uh, I'm sure you can invest in a good back chair, uh, which can help you with your back support, but it's important to keep getting, getting up. So in fact, even uh, I am in the work of uh, a sedentary through my clinic, but I am revamping everything and planning to get like a standing desk. And through the lockdown, all these three months, I have been working standing. So take that suggestion, maybe do a create a standing desk because now that's, that's going to be the new thing. Uh, your back is naturally not made to sit a lot. So try and uh, keep standing as much as you can in the middle. And in order to maintain energy, so there are different ways you can maintain energy. Energy giving foods are foods that are more complex in carbohydrate. So if you try and spread complex carbohydrates through the day, depending on what time you wake up and what time you go to bed, uh, though the, the right quantity of getting the complex carbs. Also, you know, it is very, very subjective. Like I can very loosely tell you, uh, have two cups of coffee that might give you energy. But uh, that is not how it works for everybody. Uh, it might get you very jittery and you might get a lot of palpitations and you might get too much energy which you can't handle or it might make you feel sick and you might get um, a side effect of consuming a lot of caffeine. So um, from the food point of view, proteins don't give energy, fats don't give immediate energy. Energy is only got from carbohydrate. And that is why to get the right kind of complex carbohydrate placed in your 12, 16 hour day, however long your day is, it would be my advice to you to, you know, get the right amount of energy through a sedentary job. Okay. Uh, I'll just take one more last question because this okay. is a very common question asked. Uh, how to reduce uh, fat from the face? So this oh. is a very common question asked by many uh, clients. Uh -huh. Fat from the face, you know, to get the jawline. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, fat distribution is different in everybody. Okay, while the distribution is different, that means it's a typical distribution, but it's a different distribution. So if you see men and women, men have more of a belly. That's a hormonal distribution. You will rarely see men who have big hips, but women have more distribution on the hips. It's called gynoid kind of fat deposition. And that happens because women are childbearing body type. They're supposed to bear a child. So preventing them from any kind of shock that comes from the ground, they have bigger fat deposition on the hips. So uh, when you look at body types and uh, how do I put this in the right way? Fat distribution depends upon fat recruiting. Okay, so it could be distributed hormonally anywhere, but where your body is going to decide to break it from, we don't know. So a lot of people have a complaint that the moment I get onto a diet, my face becomes small. The first place I lose weight is my, is my face. And a lot of people complain that, you know what, I'm not able to lose weight. Every, my full body has become thin, but I have a double chin over here. So it's, it's difficult to break the fat at a place like that. But some of my suggestions... Um, if you don't have any kind of TM joint issues or anything, open and close your mouth wide and shut. Uh, there are a lot of facial yogas that happen, uh, which you can do, which are facial exercises. Uh, chewing a gum, just chew a gum, try and keep that muscle in the face active. Uh, doing a lot of um, cardio exercises like running and skipping involves the overall body muscle. So that might also help you with this facial fat. So swimming helps because when you're swimming, you tend to breathe out and you open your mouth. So that constant opening, shutting uh, activity of the mouth works as a good facial activity mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I also need to do some. <laughs> I think the easiest and I'm sure the best that all are going to adapt to is chewing a gum because that, <laughs> that is going to be the easiest mm -hmm. trick for everyone to take home. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> 
so thank you so much uh, for the wonderful session i'm really honored and lucky to have this opportunity to you know uh, give a thanks uh, vote of thanks to you uh, truly it is you know health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver uh well i would like to uh, share this with uh, our viewers i know kinita ji otherwise also i have read her book as well so it's incredible to see her dedication towards you know being fit and desire of spreading fitness wisdom uh i would like to thank kinita ma'am for uh, delivering such an insightful session i wish you all the best for your future programs thank you thank you uh, i would also like to share uh, we'll be conducting our next webinar on next saturday that is 27th on uh, 10 ways to create 100 crore by mr pv subramaniam people always think how to get rich how do rich get rich quickly the problem is everybody wants to get rich quickly getting rich becoming you know getting rich or becoming wealthy takes time and that's what he is going to cover in his next session again once again i would like to thank you for making this event a success thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you thank you thank you everybody have a happy weekend